The student who sees the most rocks wins. You can look at, at the world around you and you'll see it with different eyes once you've taken a, a geology class. It's important for geology students to see rocks not just in a drawer, but to see them where they occur, to see them in context. It would be like reading a book without knowing the culture of the author and the culture that was being described in, in the book. This hill to our rear here to the south is Mount Tom and I would like you to notice the shape of it. There's a ridge on this side. Steep on one and side. And then it's less steep on yeah, the other side. On. It's steep on one side and more gently sloping on the other. I think my job as a college teacher is to make myself irrelevant to the students. That is, I want the students to be able to learn without the aid of a teacher. To prepare them to go through life as learners, having picked up in the process of my classes skills of learning, skills of inquiry, skills of problem solving. John is just in general an inspiring man. He wants college to be my journey and he inspires me to take charge of it and to not follow and not be led by professors but be inspired by them. Each place you go, form a hypothesis, what is there, and think about how you could test that hypothesis by going somewhere else. When you hear him talking about rocks, he just has this passion. I remember coming into his office to ask him a question about the project, about an experiment, how I should run something, and he'll, he'd grab a rock from one of his shelves and be like, let's look on, at this under the microscope, and I want to show you what it's like when we use different filters so you can see the different formations. And he's just a lot of fun. Geology is not just my job. It's what really interests me. And each rock has a story within it. So I like to, to figure out the stories. This is a rock that I collected on the top of Mount McLaughlin. The dark green stuff is glass uh, that is not inside the rock but on, only on the surface. So it's a puzzle. What, what's it doing there? Why, why would there be this, this glass on, on this weathered surface? And the answer is that we were the highest point for miles around. This is where the lightning strikes when it rains. And so this is a light, the result of a lightning strike, the energy in that lightning melting the rock that's here. I like to share those stories with students and have the students have the joy of discovering that history. The great things that has inspired me with John in the classroom is just his ability to do the, the great class demonstration and really get students to think about complicated geologic processes such as mixing of different magmas and what the compositions that might be through doing very simple kinds of things like eating M&Ms or sucking on a popsicle. Passion, uh, deep friendship, and very smart. <laughs> and a good teacher. I mean, jo John has this extraordinary ability to teach at many levels. He, he teaches under high, high school and, and grade school kids. He teaches college age kids. But he's also highly regarded as an educator of us, his peers. And just to show you how highly regarded he is, he's been elected as the next president of the Mineralogical Society of America. Geology in the field, taking students in the field is, is an important thing that we do. I take students to Cape Ann near Boston, to Cape Cod, uh, to Vermont, to the Adirondack Mountains. Nevertheless, there hasn't been a volcano active in New England for 200 million years, and volcanoes are an important part of geology. So every few years we manage to take students to Hawaii, where the most active volcano on Earth is erupting as we speak. We go where the rocks are well exposed and interesting and there are problems to answer and questions that are on the scale 
that undergraduate students can contribute to the scientific knowledge. Hiking with John is, is great. He'll stop and show you everything he can. If you put him at the head of a pack of students and one of those students tries to outwalk him up the mountain, it's just not going to happen. He won't say anything because he is one of the most persistently patient people I've ever met in my life. But he will outwalk that kid, guaranteed you. There's nobody going to beat John to the top of a hill. He lets you into his family. He lets you know who he is as a person in, in addition to being a professor. I know he has a daughter up in Alaska who trains dogs for dog sled racing. His wife, Nancy, came to part of our trip in Greece, so we all got to meet his wife and his son, Owen. I saw him coming out of um, playing tennis one day, and <laughs> it just made my day, because I, I didn't know he plays tennis, he plays tennis. Geology's all around, so that's why I think it's so cool. And I think he's been a big inspiration in that, of finding out what's underneath the surface. There's a lot underneath the surface for him, too. Uh, the students we have at Smith are very bright, and, and just when you engage them, they are so rewarding to deal with. I have the best job there is.